Good morning. Kalimera. Ronya Polat, to many of you who are celebrating your name days today. Usually I'm able, able, easy to go around and eyeball everybody who's celebrating, but with your masks on, I have some of the people I can't see, see who you are. But I know we have Panayotis and Panayotas and Marias, Marios, Fiora Vespina, Virginia, all are celebrating name days today. Last night we had a Vesper service for the first time in my time here for the Kimisis of the Panagia. And it was a really beautiful service. There weren't that many people here, which is understood. We're not used to having Vespers, and we're in a pandemic. And I hope more people will come last, next year when we do this. And last night was one of the times I know that every time we come to church, it's not like fireworks are going off for you or for me. Some days I celebrate liturgy and almost like an autopilot. And last night was one of those services where I just felt that I was in heaven even though there were a few people here, and maybe that's the way God wants it. He doesn't want us to be all uplifted when the church is full, but maybe more uplifted when the church is not full. And I gave a sermon last night that I think was more inspired by the Holy Spirit than usual, so I encourage you, Charlie's going to send just the sermon clip out to everyone, and I encourage you to go back and listen to it. I'm going to make some of the points tonight, today, but it won't be with the emotion that I had last night, I don't think. In our, in our uh, tradition, in our church, at Holy Week, we have an embroidery of Christ going into the tomb that is called the Epitaphio. <clears throat> the Epitaphio literally means in the tomb. It doesn't just mean Christ. It could be anybody. And the tomb that we put the Epitaphio in is called the Cuvuclion. <clears throat> and this is a special thing because it's done one time a year. Well... There is a tradition of having an icon of the Epitaphio of the Virgin Mary, an icon of the Virgin Mary going into the tomb, and a tradition of placing it in a cuvuclion. I've never been a fan of that tradition for the reason that I feel like the tomb of Christ should be resumed just for Christ. But this year, because of the pandemic, something good that happened, because we didn't have the big tomb of Christ out, I asked Felix to make me a smaller one. So now we have two cuvuclia. And I decided for the first time in my time here to buy a second epitaphio of the Virgin Mary. So we have the Kuvukio today, and we have the epitaphio in there. It's the same size as the one we used during Holy Week, except it shows the, the body of the Virgin Mary with Christ over her, taking her soul out from her body and taking it to heaven. The color of the epitaphio we use during Holy Week is magenta maroon, because that's the color that we use for Christ. And the color for the Panagia is always blue. That's because Jesus is Lord and started in heaven and came to earth. The Virgin Mary was one of us and started on earth and then went to heaven, hence the blue and the red. You see on the, on the icon of Christ up there, he always has a red under robe with a blue on top, and the Panagia is just the opposite. She has a blue undergarment with red on top. And in this service last night, one of the hymns that we sang basically told the story of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary, and it was crystallized for me in a way it never had been in my 48 years of ministry, why this feast day is so important. So just allow me a minute to explain. We know that God made the world and he made it perfect, and we know that the world fell through sin, and God wanted to redeem the world. And in order to redeem the world, he sent his son, our everlasting God, to come and be like one of us. And he did it in a way that we would understand. <clears throat> he had him come into the world as a baby and grow up as a man to show us what it is to be a man who follows Christ. And in order to do this, he needed somebody, a woman, to give herself to be his earthly mother and to show us what a woman is supposed to be. And that is the Virgin Mary. And we call her the ladder or the bridge by which God came down from heaven and became one of us. <clears throat> now, if the story of Christ ended with the crucifixion and the resurrection, that would have been impressive in its own right. But it also would have been sort of sad because it would still leave us with no hope. So we celebrate 
the Dormition of the Virgin Mary, because at her death, and again, she's like us. She was created like us. She's not eternal like Jesus Christ. She, there was a time where there was no Panagia, and then there was a Panagia, and she came into being by her parents, Joachim and Anna. It was not a divine, immaculate conception, but a conception by two people in the way that we're doing that. And she grew up not exactly like we are. She grew up in a temple raised by priests. Her parents were elderly parents, and they were widowed. They, they passed away while she was a very young child. <clears throat> but she was not perfect God, yet she aligned her life perfectly with God, showing us how we are supposed to be. And at her dormition, they went and they found her tomb empty. And the significance of this is that there is hope for us human beings that at our death we can be assumed into heaven by God. So the icon of the Virgin Mary shows Christ coming and taking the soul of the Virgin Mary wrapped in, in bands like a baby full of innocence and taking it to heaven. And the hymn that we sang last night that told this story talked about what happened at the Dormition. How all the apostles were raised up on clouds from wherever they were in the world and they were brought to where she had died. All the apostles but Thomas. Thomas was far away in India and, and they purposely left him out <clears throat> because they came to do her burial and they put her in the tomb and then Thomas came later and they opened the tomb and they found, so Thomas could see in there, otherwise there would have been no reason to open it. And they opened the tomb and, and they found just her belt there. So she was assumed body and soul into heaven. And then it says that Christ gathered with all the angels. Christ gathered with all the angels. And the gates of heaven opened and they came down to receive the soul of the Virgin Mary. And then they took her to heaven and said, open the gates so now she can enter into heaven. And if you read this hymn, or listen to my quote of it last night, and you put the name of your loved ones who have died, or eventually you put your own name in there, it makes death actually really a celebration. To think that a person passes as a person of faith, and at that moment, Christ gathers all the angels all the angels everywhere and they come and they receive the soul of that person and they take it and say open the gates so that this one can come in to the kingdom of God and so this feast is important because it shows us our destiny the resurrection is important because it shows us that there is a path to heaven but this is important because it says it shows us a path to heaven for the regular human being that's you and me so that's why we're celebrating this Feast of the Dormition and why it's celebrated even more than the birth of the Virgin Mary because this has the potential to be the end point for any and all of us. The Gospel lesson always read on this day and the other Feast of the, of the Virgin Mary is of Mary and Martha. I won't preach on that. Only the one line that says when Martha was running around and, and complained about the, the amount of work she had to do and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are distracted with much serving. One thing is needful, Mary has chosen the good portion to sit at the Lord's feet. That does not demean work. That doesn't mean that we don't have to run around in our life because we do. It doesn't mean that we can't be stressed out about life and running around because we are. But it means that in the middle of all the distractions and work that we're doing, to not forget the one needful thing, which is to be with our Lord in this life in order to prepare to be with him for everlasting life. So thank you for doing the needful thing today and putting aside time on this Saturday morning to come and worship Christ. We are not the Theotokos. There was one Theotokos. But the word Theotokos means God-bearer. And when <clears throat> we receive communion, we become a Theotokos. We become a God-bearer because God comes into us and we carry him in us, not in the same way that Virgin Mary did, but we carry him in us nonetheless. So thank you for coming and taking care of that needful thing today. Thank you to our crew of people who helped today, Chris and Michael in the altar, Joanna, our second chanter, and Charlie, and our outside crew was Myra and Georgia and Jim and George and Andrea. So thank you for all your help doing that. 
We don't usually have liturgy on Saturdays during the regular year, but we will have liturgy every Saturday until the end of this pandemic to accommodate all those who want to worship either Saturday or Sunday. Thank you for being here today. And let me get my gloves and mask on. I will hand out on either one from one hand, Arthur from one hand, in your hands, and enjoy your day today. <laughs>